Hi, my name is Andrews. E3 is over! Well, at least until next year when it starts again. But we had three glorious and eventful days last week, and now that it's over and I have time to think about it, information to sink in, I want to talk about the stuff that actually stuck with me. So this video has no real structure to it, I will just talk about things I thought were important. So let's start with day zero with press conference day which started with Microsoft's press conference. They opened up with Modern Warfare 3 which looked like Call of Duty. The demo they showed was on the submarine which actually reminded me the ship level from the first Modern Warfare game and that's practically all I can say of it. If you have ever played a Call of Duty game from the past years it looks like that. I think then they showed off Gears of War 3 uh, Cliff Blazinski and Ice-T came out and played the game. Uh, and then a lot of Kinect stuff. For example, they showed off Master 3 and how it will use Kinect. Uh, it will use voice recognition. So you can speak out the dialogue options in the game, which is kind of cool. And also you can give commands to your teammates. For example, you can say, say Garrus, move up, and Garrus will push forward. Things like that. Which is kind of cool, only I, f I think, why do you need Kinect for that? Cannot you use a traditional headset, which will allow this feature to be on different platforms? But it still is kind of cool that it's there. Then Ubisoft came by to show off their new Ghost Recon game and how it will use Kinect. So, you have all this Weapon Forge uh, system, and basically you can go in there and modify your weapons for you can you can choose a standard weapon then swipe your hand and uh, the weapon will take apart itself and you can change different parts so when you made modifications you can actually test the weapon and basically it loads up this uh, training ground sequence or the targets and you can also again use connect to shoot and basically it looks stupid it, it really does because you have to just bend over like put your hands something like this and then just go that's how you shoot you take your arm and you basically just what the hell is it? Like, looks stupid. Looks utterly stupid. Go figure. Tim Schafer came out, showed Once Upon a Monster, their Sesame Street game. And I like that he made the joke about the fake family. Unleash the simulated family. Very lifelike. Also, Star Wars Connect was shown off, which, which look very like on rails experience. You basically just. You have this path that you go through and kind of just swipe enemies. Like, doesn't look very interesting. Disney came out and said that they're bringing their whole Disneyland to Microsoft and Kinect. Other than the, some basic statistics about the park itself, there wasn't told what the game will be itself. But I cannot imagine a lot. Maybe, I think, I think some kind of mini game collection. Peter Molyneux came on and showed Fable: The Journey. And basically looked like an Unreal shooter with magic. He then, after the press conference, said that it's not on rails, but nothing in that demo said that it's not that. Uh, they also talked about how they will improve the, uh, the dashboard, upgrade it, and they will add YouTube support, which is kind of cool. Also, they announced Halo Anniversary, which is basically Halo Combat Evolved, but only remastered. The interesting thing about that game is that multiplayer runs on the Halo Reach engine, but the single player runs on the old engine that the first game utilized, only some code is on top of it. That enables the gamers to switch between old graphics and new graphics on the fly. Like, one button, no loading, so not, it just switches. Which is kind of cool. Like, if you're gonna make that, if you're gonna make that switch between retro and new graphics, I think that's the way to go. And, at the end of the press conference, there was shown a Halo 4 teaser a new Halo trilogy, as M Microsoft put it. But overall, it was kind of a safe 
press conference. Not that much has been announced, some cool stuff, but nothing mind blowing and no like <gasps> like moments. Well, maybe Halo 4, but you kind of knew that they would do something with Halo. Continuing with the big press conferences, later that day Sony ha held their press conference. Uh, Jack Stranson came out and talked about PSN and its outage. He apologized to everyone and said he, that he's thankful that everyone uh, stick with them. And he handled it pretty well, I think. Then the third game demo was shown and it was Uncharted 3. Now let me tell you, that game looks awesome. Like visually, it's just stunning and gorgeous. It's so nice to look at. Oh god, like... Mwah, really, it's so good looking. It's so good looking. And also, the gameplay itself looks just awesome. I'm kinda surprised that they started to win this game because it's kind of a showstopper. But... They open strongly. Then they showed Resistance 3, which looked like a generic shooter. Demo was nothing spared. Sony announced a PlayStation brand television. I think it's a 24 inch screen with 3D in it. Uh, but the coolest feature, basically, what it has is that since it does two images at the same time, to 4 3D, it actually can be used for split screen. So you know how typical split screen ones there's the largest in the middle. But using 3D glasses, they can actually uh, render uh, one eye as a separate image and the other eye as a different image. So basically, player one gets their image, player two gets the whole complete other image. Which is kind of cool, like, it allows them to get rid of that line and use the whole screen. Ken Levine came out, talked about how Bioshock will use the move, uh, and then he said that the NGP will have you know, a Bioshock game on it. And then, a lot of MBG stuff. So, the NPG actually is called the Vita. The price will be 249 for the Wi-Fi only model, and 299 for the 3G model, and that number will be in North America in, and in Europe the same, so $249 in America, $249 Euros in Europe. They also announced that AT&T will be the carrier for that platform, which caused <laughs> quite a reaction in the audience. Basically, it started with a laugh and then just grew into this booing throughout the whole auditorium. And we'll be partnering with AT&T as the exclusive carrier for PlayStation Vita in the United States. Here we go. They showed off some games, uh, they showed off Uncharted, for the Vita they showed off a game which is called Thing Rising or something like that. I think it was a fine press conference, better than Microsoft's, but nothing that special. Because well, everyone was waiting the next day when Nintendo held its press conference. It was quite short, I think somewhere about an hour. Uh, they showed off some 3DS games. Uh, but mostly, of course, the bulk of the press conference was devoted to their new console, which is called Wii U. Kind of a dumb name, but what's a good name for anything? They mainly focused on the controller than the console itself, which has some press to believe that the box for the console isn't in its final form. So the controller looks like a tablet with... Uh, touch screen in the middle, uh, analog sticks on the side and D button for face buttons and, front, and shoulder buttons on the sides. The thing is about that controller is that the image that is shown to the users is getting directly from the console itself. And that can be used in different ways because you can have one thing on the screen but completely other on the touch screen. And also you can use Wii modes and nunchucks from Wii on the Wii U, which is kind of cool. And they showed some tech demo-y things about implementations for the new hardware. The thing that stuck with me is uh, Catch Me. Basically it's a five-player game, four players use 
Wii modes, the fifth player using your controller. Uh, your TV the, or the main screen is divided into four sections. There, this is where the four players with Wii modes look. The fifth player uses the new controller and it looks on the small screen on the controller. The catch is that those four players are it. Their goal is to catch the fifth player. The f but uh, and the level itself is this maze, which is color code, uh, which is color coded, so you can go. He's in the yellow area, and everyone will go look for the runner away to the yellow area. But the fifth player on the touch screen has a top-down view of the map and the position of all the players in the game, so he has more information, which allows him to climb. It's kind of cool premise. I like it. And then talk about hardware practically anything they mostly talked about the experience and such stuff but from things that are out there it's somewhere on the level as Xbox 360 and PS3 right now so at least for a couple of years they will be on the same level as current generation console but when the next generation will hit they will be again underpowered and that's probably was the most exciting conference on the all just to see the new console and what what it actually is only e even if the controller was only showed. So that's it for the big free press conference. All EA and Ubisoft held their press conferences between Microsoft and Sony. Uh, I didn't watch them because I wasn't that interesting in it. Only I know that uh, the Ubisoft's press conference host was <laughs> was something special, Mr. Cafe. His name is. Since I wasn't on the show floor myself, I cannot tell tell you about much about the games that were were shown. Uh, only that I know, I'm very excited for Bioshock Infinite. I know it looks great. I'm excited for Ridge Racer Unbound, uh, which is made by the makers of Flat Out. I like that game series, so I think, that, and they have some interesting physics-based things for that game. Um, of course, I'm excited for Arkham City. I'm excited for Mask 3. Uh, I want to see how the new Need for Speed game, Need for Speed Ride. That's it for my thoughts, and I want to know your thoughts. So, if you have anything to say on the topic of V3 this year, leave them in the comment section below. And that will be it for this episode of my take. Again, my name was Anders. Thank you for watching, and. Bye!